Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you the Raven Cycle book tag. So the original Raven Cycle tag was created by Michelle Ellis Life and I'll leave a link to her channel and the original tag down below. In the books, Maura is the relaxed mum that is Blue's friend more than actual mother. Who is your favourite fictional mother? So I have already created a video where I talk about all of my favourite fictional parents, but if I had to choose a mum character that was my absolute tip top favourite, it would have to be The Mum in Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Draper. I've talked about this book a lot on my channel before, and it's about this girl called Melody who has cerebral palsy and she's never been able to speak before but she discovers that there is this machine which enables people like her to speak but the world may not be ready for her words and while Melody is an amazing character and the story is absolutely amazing I feel like the mother in this one truly reminds me of my own mother who has always done what is right by us as children who's always encouraged us who's always motivated us but also most importantly always fought for us when we were being mistreated or anything was going wrong and she knows that other people could have been treating us better she was always there fighting for us and we definitely see the mother in this one fighting for her child, encouraging her child and loving her child all the way through and brilliant mum in this book, I have a brilliant mum in real life and that's the answer to this question. Adam wanted to go to a lion bleed so he could escape from where he came from. Have you ever dreamt of living somewhere else? Where? So this is not a bookish question but truthfully I've dreamed of living in Spain for a very very long time. It's because I love the mountains and hiking in the mountains, I love the beach and the ocean and I also love being in the city and when I go to Alicante to Au Pair, Alicante is a place which has all three of those things, a nearby city, nearby beaches and nearby mountains. And yeah, while Australia, which is where I did my year abroad, gives me all of those things as well, the problem with Australia is that it's just so far away from my family and I'm really close to my family and don't think I could live so far away from them if I didn't have the funds to visit frequently. So Spain is my option just because it's still in Europe and nearby the Netherlands and the UK. In the second book, we meet the grey man. He is a hit man who loves poetry. Name a book you thought was going to be one thing and turned out to be something else. So for this one I've got something that is quite Raven Cycle themed and that is Cool Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater herself. So I read up about this book a lot before it came out so I knew what it was going to be about but still managed to shake my expectations. So if you don't know what this book is about, Cool Down the Hawk is the beginning of a sequel series to The Raven Cycle. I really do recommend you read The Raven Cycle before you read this one just to understand everything that's going on and it follows the dreamers and the three brothers, the three brothers being Declan, Ronan and Matthew Lynch and it's their story essentially. Also follows dreamer hunters who are hunting for people who dream things. I knew what this book was about, I knew it was not going to be just a continuation of the Raven Cycle series, I knew it was going to be a different shift and a different focus. However, I must admit that I expected we were going to get a lot more Adam Parrish in this one, seeing as Adam Parrish is a character I really love and there are reasons why I expected there to be more Adam Parrish and while we do have some great scenes with him in them, they're just not as many as I wanted and <laughs> didn't satisfy my heart completely so maybe I didn't get everything I expected from this book but I did manage to get some really good things out of it as well. Gansey has spent most of his life searching for a buried king who has promised to grant one wish. If you could meet Glendower what wish would you ask for? So for my realistic and truthful answer if I was able to be granted one wish by Glendower I would hand this off to my younger sister. I don't think anybody deserves a wish more than my younger sister and I would like her to have hers granted but if I'm going for the bookish route I would say that I would wish that I had all the time in the world to read all of the books that I want to read ever and never run out of time and always be able to finish the books. Name your favourite villain. So my ultimate favourite villain is Queen Lavana, but I don't want to talk about her right now just because I've talked about her a lot in the past and I want to focus on a different villain who I really really love and that is May Apprentice from The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I feel like May Apprentice is a very very scary villain just because he is so human and he is so realistic. I feel like, oh let me tell you what this book is about. So The Knife of Never Letting Go is set in this science fiction kind of dystopian world and we follow Todd who is the last boy in his town and he's just about to make the crossover into what is defined as a man in his town. And in this town you can hear everybody's thoughts and there's lots and lots of noise going on, they call everybody's thoughts the noise and he's always lived with the noise and it's always been said that everyone has noise 
but Todd stumbles across this area where he finds complete silence and maybe everything that he's been told about his life is not true kind of goes from there and it's a fantastic series that I definitely recommend. May Apprentice is a villain in this one but what I like about this series is that you come across a lot of characters who might be able to be defined as a villain but it's quite grey area whereas May Apprentice is the most straightforward villain and yet I still feel like that grey area surrounds him. I find him very scary because he's very very human and we've seen villains like this in real life where they use words to manipulate people's thoughts and get people on their side and they're very smart and maybe because you can see they're human and you see their emotions you can feel for them and connect to them while also being utterly terrified of what they can do to you and how they might get into your head. I feel like manipulative villains are definitely the most scary ones because you don't always know that you're being manipulated and you don't always see how you are working into their larger plan and how you are being changed to agree with their thoughts. May Apprentice? He does that very, very well. Blue's got her Raven Boys, who makes up your bookish squad? So I've got six characters here, three boys and three girls to make up my squad. The first one is going to be Adam Parrish, mostly because I love him, but also because you always need a mechanic in your bookish squad. And in the Raven Cycle, he seems to be one who comes up with a lot of ideas that they kind of need for their quests and journeys, and I feel like that's always beneficial to have on your squad. We've also got Adilio from the Gone series. Adilio is just incredibly straightforward and practical. He knows how to run a team, and he doesn't like to soak up all the I'm the leader, I'm in the limelight kind of feels. He'd much rather be second in command, but he also is just so practical and straightforward he would get the job done and I need someone like that on my team. Then we've also got Jesper from the Six of Crows series. I feel like he'd be really good to have on your team just because he's a sharpshooter. You could always do with a sharpshooter, but he also cracks a lot of jokes and it's just a lot of fun and if you have a squad it's always good to have someone light-hearted to pick up the mood and make it all a laugh. And then for my girls in my bookish squad, I have Scarlet from the Lunar Chronicles. Again, she's a shooter with great aim and she and Jesper would get along very well, but she's also kind of the mother character. She cares for the people around her and she's just so fierce and so strong. I would love to be her best friend. We've got Annabeth who's really great at problem solving and she would stay focused no matter what's going on. And last but not least we have Alice Cullen because I think it's always beneficial to have someone who can see the future on your team, always puts the odds in your favour and I wouldn't mind having one of those vampires with me because vampires have a lot of benefits that means we could probably win in any fight. And there you have my bookish squad. Ronan knows how to kick butt but he also has a sensitive side. What book have you read that was action-packed but also had a lot of emotional scenes? So I struggled with this one quite a lot. I couldn't think of many action-packed books that I'd read that were also emotional, but I ended up going with Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Set in a world where Orisha magic used to exist and hum throughout the kingdom, but then one day it disappeared and the culture of magicians was oppressed by a king. But now our main character has a chance to bring magic back and it's going to be a difficult journey and an uprising is involved and reading this one was just so so good because on the surface level of it we've got a fantasy story with a lot of magic and a lot of action happening and it's go 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 from the beginning all the way until the end. However underneath we're seeing a lot of black themes about oppression, about violence against black peoples and a lot of things about black beauty and the strength within yourself and it really hit me emotionally while also being such a fun read at the same time and I love the duality of that and I think Tomi Adeyemi did a brilliant job with it not only in this book but personally I also think she really brought it to the table again in a sequel as well. Noah has a heart of gold. Which character recently touched your heart? And for this one I'm going to answer The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chopsky and I'm going to talk about Charlie. So when I read this book initially in the beginning I absolutely hated it. For the first quarter of this book me and this book were not getting along. We're mostly just following Charlie as he's living his secondary school experience and he's quite a wallflower in that he observes everyone and doesn't really participate in life but in this book we start to see him starting to participate and what that means for him. So throughout this book I was really not digging Charlie as a character, not digging the storyline at all, but by the end of it I was a bit of an internal emotional mess and Charlie just touched my heart so much because he, like Noah, is just such a pure character who has the best intentions and just doesn't know that he's special and that he's loved and that he is unique within himself and 
I just want to shout to him and protect him and let him know that he's amazing. He is so pure and he doesn't realise it and that was a lot to read about. Kala is a woman who speaks her mind and puts her foot down when necessary. Who is your favourite female strong character? So for this one my go-to answer is Annabeth who I've already talked about and I also really like Scarlet. I've already talked about both of them and put them in my bookish squad so that's a very quick answer. Chainsaw is an awesome raven boy pet and he's quite exotic. If you could have an exotic pet what would it be and what would you name it? Now I'm not one for exotic pets or whatever but I guess I'll just say a dragon and if I I had a dragon I would probably end up naming oh, I don't think I could have a dragon I wouldn't be good with a dragon okay I can't have a dragon I just I'm not really about the animals in books that much so I can't say that I have a pet that I want I'm gonna have to go for something very standard and that's gonna be a dog I would love to have a dog one day in the future if I had a black Labrador I would name the dog Batman and if I had a white Labrador I would name the dog Shakespeare and that's that so that is actually the official end of the tag, but I'm adding a question, just because I feel like with the Raven Cycle fandom, oftentimes people exclude Henry Cheng, and that's because of certain reasons, but I feel like Henry Cheng is still a great character and should definitely be included more in the Raven Cycle fandom. Henry Cheng is often an underrated character in the Raven Cycle gang. Highlight a book that is often overlooked. And for that I'm going to be talking about the Alchemists of Loom series by Elise Kova. What I'm holding up for you here is the Dragons of Nova which is actually the sequel but that's because I don't own the first book in the series which is the Alchemists of Loom and looks like this. So in this one we have Ari who is the wraith and she is a bit of an underdog within this society. She hates all dragons and she has given her life to clockwork and machinery in an attempt to fight back against the powers that be. And then we have Severo who is a dragon and hates the dragon king who has usurped his family's throne and he wants to get back and create an uprising and knock over this horrible dragon king. The way that they can do this is with a loom and Ari knows everything about this loom and Severo doesn't know anything anything about it. So when Severa gets injured and Ari stumbles across him and sees a chance to strike out at the oppressor and at everything, Severa decides to offer her one thing that she cannot deny and they end up having to work together. So I really love the world building in this. It's set in this steampunk fantasy world where dragons are really, really unique creatures. And then we have Ari who is this kick butt main character who is very smart but also very, very fierce. We have the enemies to lovers trope at least the first book brings that much tension for you to believe that it might be the enemies to lovers trope in the very end and it was just such good world building such good plot and such good writing I really really love this series and I think it's definitely underrated not enough people know about it also the covers are gorgeous why would you not want to pick up this series so there you have it that is the raven cycle tag i hope you enjoyed all of my answers please let me know in the comment section down below have you read the raven cycle if you have which raven boy or blue blue just counts okay which member of the gang z is your absolute favorite and if you haven't please let me know about a book that you love but is overlooked in the comments please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't you forget to hit the notification bell to be updated every time i have a new video and hey my outro fits today you know what they say, when was it upwards? Excelsior.